What is going on world? Welcome back to Malik's Water Garden. Everybody that has subscribed to the channel, you guys are all awesome. We're over 1,500 subscribers and it feels great. Yesterday's video is about all the different Playco caves I got for my Zebra Playcos. And you guys should definitely check that out. I'll put a link to it up here so you can check out that video because it's quite informative and it talks about how I, uh, what type of caves I use and uh, what type of success I have with this particular design of caves and whatnot. So you guys should check that out. Today's video was supposed to be the breeding trigger video, but I'm going to put that for a few days back because I found that this was a little bit more important and uh, this video was brought up about by some of the things that you guys have actually messaged me recently and also some of the other conversations I've had with some of the prominent Playco breeders and uh, Zebra Playco breeders especially and uh, it really prompted me to think uh, this question and like, I want to ask this out loud from you guys. Do you think we overfeed our Playcos? Produced by Malik. I really believe that we do and a lot of times that's one of the reasons that our fish can die uh, an untimely death and uh, I've actually learned this over the years through experience actually a lot of bad experiences and uh, that's one of the main reasons why I'm making this channel is to stop uh, to help everybody learn from my mistakes that I have made in the past and uh, that I, I might make now uh, to so that you don't potentially make some of these same mistakes now I was actually hanging out with uh, my friend Herrera big ups to Herrera by the way he brings me uh, his mom has a catering company and I buy all my food from them so I'll have him comment below and put their catering company link if he chooses to and uh, not a paid advertisement but advertisement but I am really pleased with uh, the food that I'm getting and I'm um, feeling healthy and it's great. So anyways, I was actually outside having a conversation with Herrera about Zebra Playcos and uh, he said the same thing. He said his larger adult male he thinks is overeating and then he's worried that he could die. Now uh, I had a conversation with Dr. Thomas a couple of days ago, actually yesterday, and uh, he informed me that he, he lost uh, I think one or two of his large adult males and he said they just overeat and uh, they got bloated and uh, and also recently I was actually talking to another one of you guys I'm not gonna name the person because of privacy reasons she sent me a message uh, of her fish and asked me if the fish was pregnant or bloated the fish is only about a year and a half old and uh, it's not bloated uh, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be watching this video I just wanna say just have reduced the feeding a little bit so that it doesn't get to the next uh, stage where the, the effect of bloat might be reversible if the fish suffers any internal damage to its organs due to bloat. Now, um, also, James Armo, I uh, just want to uh, give him a shout out, and uh, he had a really bad experience a few weeks back where uh, there was a little bit of extra food uh, thrown into the tank by one of his children uh, accidentally, and uh, his child was trying to help out, just do what we do as adults, you know, sees daddy feeding the tank. I want to feed the tank, so whatnot. Uh, puts too much food. Uh, he sent me pictures about an hour later uh, that he said the water was changed. They took out all the food, but he still suffered some losses. So I've been thinking about this quite a bit, and I actually have pictures of some of his dead fish. And I was examining them yesterday uh, after I talked to Dr. Thomas, and uh, I was thinking about this quite a bit. And actually, I'm, I'm convinced now that most likely the reason he suffered the loss of his adult fish but he didn't lose some of his other fish in the tank like he had about I think 12 or so zebra plecos in the tank and uh, he lost four of the larger ones and uh, they all looked like they over ate and uh, I mean having excess food in the water can't follow the water but the reality of it is if I were to put let's say I put a handful of food in each of these tanks and uh, the water doesn't fill the, the food will sit there for five six hours until the plecos eventually do eat it out and the snails will get to it and uh, it doesn't foul my water uh, but what I do notice is when I overfeed the fish definitely do eat more than they can so what I'm realizing is it might have been I initially I told him it's probably nitrates and uh, it was probably ammonia and nitrite spikes but he didn't record any of that in his measurements so like if your tank did have an ammonia spike or a nitrite spike it's not just gonna clear out within an hour or just you know by one water change so you might be able to still detect it even after a large volume water change and he said his wife removed out all the excess food and siphoned out the area where the food was. So I doubt that it was an ammonia spike that did actually kill the fish. And, I, and, and I'm strongly convinced at this point, after looking at the pictures as well as after having all these conversations with all these different breeders, that the, ch the chance of the fish or eating was probably one of the main factors. Uh, and, and the thing is with uh, these guys, they, they're not intelligent in this sense. They're one of the most intelligent fish 
in terms of other aspects of things, but I find Playcos are really dumb when it comes to eating and uh, getting themselves stuck. I've actually lost fish that have got themselves stuck in the in behind a, a sponge filter, you know? So they would just go in between the sponge filter and the glass and if the sponge filter is wedged in with sand or something else and the fish can't easily move out of there, it can get stuck in the sponge filter and die. Like I've had this happen. Uh, they've gone into uh, outflow tubes and get stuck in there. Um, not too many times, it's just mostly super heads and stuff that I have growing out in the fish room. Uh, but I have lost uh, L199, got stuck behind a sponge filter. Um, you know, like another hypocestus, I forgot what type it was, it got stuck in between two ornaments. Like the two caves, it went in between the caves and got wedged. So like these type of things do happen and I find that that's one of the main reasons. Uh, and, and they're not smart when it comes to feeding as well, they just keep eating. Now, I believe personally that the reason for this is, is that these animals in nature don't come across the large amounts of food that we feed them in our aquariums. We throw a lot more high calorious nutritional food into our tanks than what these animals would encounter in nature. For example, a fish that sits on the current is waiting for food to pass by. It might not get so much food just passing by it on the current all the time and it's eating Ausflag, which is like mom and other debris that's going on rocks and stuff like you know microorganisms and biofilm and stuff and you know things like that and when it does come across that substantial amounts of food because it doesn't come across these types of food regularly its entire instinct is to eat as much as possible because it might not get another meal for a couple of days a couple of weeks or even a month or longer so like because of this reason, this animal tends to overeat. So in our aquariums, when we are feeding them every day and we're putting a large amount of food, it becomes quite difficult. I actually have a quite hard time feeding my L uh, L333 group right now because there is about two fish that are eating all the food, and uh, and also there's discus in the tank. So like there's my breeding pair of discus is in that tank. So I have to feed that tank a few times a day to keep the food. Uh, give the discus a decent amount of food intake so I'm having a little bit difficulty because the the playcos are eating all the leftover discus food and they're getting a lot more weight than I personally like to have on them so I've been trying to manage that a little bit by target feeding the discus putting a little bit of food every few hours for the discus and not feeding uh, too much food that falls to the bottom of the tank and that's been helping for me but uh, my friend Herrera who lives down the street he has this issue with his large adult male zebra pleco where it eats all the food that goes in the tank so he's actually was just telling me earlier today he's worried that the fish might die from overeating and there's nothing he can do because reality is either you have removed the fish into another tank which means you have set up a brand new tank with the heater and the water parameters and everything unless you have a heated room this is going to be another challenge that each person might have to overcome based on your individual situation so um, this is something I mean I'm still struggling with it to an extent what I found personally that works for me is uh, I try to keep the same type of fish in a group the same age if one fish is a little older, I find that those fish tend to eat more and also seem to suffer from the effects of overeating as opposed to younger fish. Uh, so I try to keep the same age group of fish and I try to feed them small amounts of high nutritious food. Dr. Thomas told me this yesterday. He actually actively took uh, the, the spoon that comes out of the Dr. Bacillier container. Well, let me just pull that out for you guys. So this container actually comes with its own spoon. I don't know if I have, like, this one's actually buried so I can't actually find it. But it has a little tiny spoon. Yeah, I can't find the spoon right now, but uh, it's a really small spoon. And uh, it doesn't hold much food, actually. And he took a spoonful of food out, and he counted to see how much food particles are in the spoon. And he found that there's 50, 50 odd food particles in one spoonful. It's like a tiny little spoon of this stuff. So 50 food particles, I actually think like each fish you know, should get about 10-15 particles of food and uh, he said the same thing. So he puts about one spoon for, you know, five to ten fish and uh, he thinks that's even too much in some cases because he's realizing that this food is highly nutritious and the fish does not need more than five to ten pieces of this stuff per day to, to actually sustain its life and to also maintain optimal health and also to even do egg development and all that stuff. So now when we are trying to breed, you do want to feed a little bit extra uh, to get good egg development and stuff but what I recommend is don't overfeed your tank just feed what you normally feed and uh, if you want to just monitor the fish and see how their stomachs are after feeding and if their stomachs are like 
bulging after feeding, then reduce feeding. If the stomachs are not bulging, then you're feeding the right amount. If the stomachs are getting smaller, if they're not putting on weight, then you're underfeeding. But chances are, we're, uh, there's, I don't think any fish keeper underfeeds their tank unless they're completely neglecting the tank and forgetting to feed it. If you are feeding the tank, chances are you are overfeeding just like me and everybody else we know. So uh, this is the basically the bottom line of the video, of the video is that try to feed high nutritious food, try to feed less than more, and always, always, always monitor your fish from uh, the side as well as from the top to see if it's bulging on any form, if it has any, like, because the thing is, the, the line between a full fish and a bloated fish is very small. Like, you, your fish could be full right now, and it might have indigestion, and then tomorrow, the two days from now, it might have bloat, and it might suffer internal organ damage just due to that, it might die. This is very likely with a lot of these guys, and especially if you are feeding dry food that is not like soft, like the, the Evo brand, like this stuff is quite dry. Uh, I would not call this dry food, this is actually specially formulated for fish, but like tetratropical color granule and stuff, and any other dr dry foods that are commercially available, or discus food like, uh, you know, the Sarah discus brand, and stuff like that, they do expand in the stomach of the fish. So after you put the food into the water, after the fit the fish, if the fish eats it right away, if it overeats, about 10, 20 minutes in, the fish's stomach juices and, and liquids in the stomach will expand the food. And that would create a very unfavorable condition for this animal, especially if the animals are small, high ancestors type of fish. Uh, their stomachs are also quite small and the amount of space the animal might have to hold food and digest it is, is also quite like if the fish is this small its stomach is even smaller and then you got to think about all the internal organs that are stuck in that stomach plus a swim bladder plus a liver you know other organs and, and, and intestines and everything has to fit into that little tiny space so now if this animal that has a tiny little stomach eats like five big food particles like five big tetratropical color granules and then expands into like so much more in this tiny little stomach it's not gonna be comfortable for the animal you know what I mean imagine a person eating a plate of food and it becoming four plates in, in your stomach so if you ate a plate of food and you're already full and if that food expands into four times what you ate imagine how uncomfortable that would feel this is what our fish could be going through during these processes so we have to really pay attention to it and I think that's uh, the bottom line of the video I just hope you guys uh, pay attention to this one key factor and uh, I think this is going to help all of us have our fish live a long and healthy life. Thank you so much for your love and support. I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. God bless you all.